Have you ever looked at a kid or a man somewhere and you've looked at them and they've been doing something and you've said, whose kid is this? in the Old Testament about the army of Israel and the people of the Philistines who were fighting all the time. The Philistines would come to declare war and make war with the Israelites. They're still doing it today, aren't they? But they would come and they would cause these battles to erupt. And on this particular, at this particular time, they were on two different mountains. The Philistines was on one mountain and the Israelites were on the other mountain with the valley between. And they were rage, waging war in this way. The giant Goliath would come out every morning and then again at evening. And all he had to do was come out and yell and the Israeli army would flee. Isn't that what he does to us today? He comes to us and he yells. And what do we do? We either retreat or we either say, enough is enough. Well, on this particular day, David's two older brothers were there with the army fighting the Philistines, fleeing from the Philistines. And David's dad said, David, I want you to go to the camp. I want you to check on your brothers, and I want you to take, you, take them some food. So David arrives, this young kid arrives at the camp, and whenever he just checks it all out and sees what's going on, he said, what is going on here? And they say, well, this giant comes out every day and, and every morning, every night, and he yells at us, and, and it's just a terrible battle we're having. And David said, well, tell me, what's going to be done with the one that takes this giant out? And they said, oh, whoever takes this giant out, he's going to get to marry the king's daughter. He's going to be able to have riches. He's going to be able to have his family never have to pay taxes again. Now, how many of you know that's a good deal? Particularly the tax thing in the day we live in. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we never had to pay taxes again? And so he, he, after he heard all this, he was ready to go. He was ready to get into that battle and take that giant out. And so the king said, but you're just a kid. And this guy has been training since he was a kid to fight. You don't know anything about it. And David said, well, let me tell you my story. I've taken out a lion, and I've taken out a bear, and I can take out this man of the Philistines. And the king said, well, if you're so determined, then what you've got to do, you've got to wear my armor. And David put it on, and it didn't fit. I want to tell you folks, if it's not your armor, you can't wear somebody else's armor. You can't fight somebody else's warfare. You've got to go in the strength of the Holy Spirit in what God has called you to do, not what someone else has been called to do. And so David got rid of it all. He went to the brook. He got five smooth stones out of the water, and he had his slingshot in his back pocket. And he started running towards that Goliath. And as he started running, Goliath looked at him and said, what do you think, I'm a dog? And he said, I am going to take you out. I'm going to feed your carcass to the birds and the beasts before this day's over. And David continued to run towards him. And he said, oh, but no, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. And before this day is over, your carcass is going to be given to the birds and the wild beasts. And David pulls his slingshot out, puts one stone in it, pulls the sling back, and lets it go. And that one smooth stone embedded in the giant's forehead, and down he went dead. 
when the, he died, of course, the rest of the Israeli army came out and they were yelling, oh yes, oh yes, and they started running after the Philistines and the Philistines started fleeing and then the Israeli army came back and they picked up all the spoils and took it all back to camp. And in the meantime, David is taking the sword of Goliath and cutting his head off and starting back to Jerusalem with his head. As he went, the king had seen all this happen. The king wasn't believing it. And he said, whose son is this? And Abner said, I don't know. I can't tell you. I, I have no idea who he is. And Saul said to the young man, whose son are you? And David answered, I'm the son of thy servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Bethlehemite. There was a little baby boy born one night in a stable in the little town of Bethlehem. The angels came out to sing, and they were singing praises and declaring peace, that peace had come to the world. And the lowly shepherds in that field were listening and watching that night and amazed at the spectacular sight they were seeing and the words they were hearing. And the announcement was made to those lowly shepherds. While on the other side of the world, as it were, there were wise men. And they had been learning that when a bright star appeared, it meant a king was born. And so suddenly, a bright star appeared, and the wise men started their journey to look for this king, the king of kings and the lord of lords. It's amazing how the difference was the shepherds, the lowliest of men, and the wise men at the top of the chain. But God meant for the lowliest to the highest, highest and all in between to know about this baby born in that manger. At the age of 12, this little boy disappeared. The family had gone to Jerusalem to do what they did on that particular feast day, the feast of the Passover. And as they started back, they'd gone about a day's journey. And all at once, Mary and Joseph see that their son is not there. And so they go back to Jerusalem and in their walk back and then looking for him, it took three days to find this kid. And he's in the temple and he's talking with the wise men of those days and they were all astonished at him at the words he was saying and at the questions he was asking. They couldn't believe that. Who is this kid? He grew up, he was teaching, he was preaching, he was healing, he was delivering, he was raising from the dead, he was doing all of these kind of things. Who is this man? Who is he the son of? And the question was asked, what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? The question was in everyone's mind. This man came to be baptized by John one day. And as he came up out of that water, suddenly his father came forward to announce, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And the announcement had come to the world, God the Holy Father is the father of this son. He's the father of this kid. He's the one who birthed Jesus, brought Jesus into this world by the Holy Spirit. Jesus had come to be baptized by John, and God, his Father, spoke up, claiming his son. Elijah and Moses appeared with Jesus, who was in this bright, shining garment that was brighter than anything we can imagine, and it was on the mountain of transfiguration. Moses represented the law, Joshua, I mean Elijah, represented the prophets, and Peter, James, and John were the apostles, the three groups of them together. And they were looking on, and suddenly out of the cloud that covered them, once again Father God spoke out, and he said, This is my son, my beloved son, hear 
him. The law is good. The prophets are good. The apostles are good. But most of all, hear him. Jesus is the word of life. In the beginning was the word, Jesus. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus, the Lamb of God, was born to Mary, his mother, and God, his father. Like David, Jesus could have asked the question, what's in it for me? And the father would have answered after Jesus said, here I'm going to have to be born as a human. I'm going to have to go through life and suffer all the things that the created beings, the humans, are suffering. I have to be spit upon. I have to be scourged. I have to have my back beaten. I have to have a crown of thorns on my head. I've got to go through all of that. I've got to be crucified. I've got to die. And then, of course, I'm going to be raised again. But Father, what's in it for me? And the Father would have answered, during your time on earth, you will see many people come to the knowledge that you are the Son of God. You will heal many people. You will cast demons out of many people. You will raise the dead. But in your death on that cross that day, you will pay the price. You will ransom people, all the people of the world, past, present, and future. You will redeem them from all their sins. Their sins will be forgiven at that time. You will pay the ransom at that time for all who believe in you to have and be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You will pay for all people who believe to be healed, to be whole, to have all their needs met according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And most of all, all who believe, you will pay the ransom for them to have eternal life. You will pay the ransom for innumerable people, men, women, boys, and girls, to become your brothers and sisters and live eternally with you and with me. And Jesus said, I'll go. And Jesus, the Son of God, came indeed. He came and he paid the ransom for you and for me to receive everything that pertains to us in life and in godliness. All we must do is believe and receive. So many times I will hear people say, I'm praying for you if they have a prayer request of some kind. But it's very few times I see and hear people say, I'm praying and believing for you to receive. The action of prayer isn't done until it goes all the way through belief and receive. When we come to the receiving, then we have completed that process. And the word tells us that if we shall confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, and we believe in our heart that God hath raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We believe, we receive, and we become part of that family that people will look at us and say, they are children of the Most High God. We know who their father is. We know who that son and that daughter belongs to. They belong to Father God in heaven. Welcome to you today. 
as part of my family in God. I look forward to spending eternity with you. I mean, Christ, and he sees Christ when he's looking at me, then he's pleased. We see the culture of the kingdom is actually actually the fruit of the Spirit. It is nothing that I have done, but God has done it all. So receive good news today. It is only from the Word of God that faith comes. And I keep hearing his voice saying, Jan, I got this. So I'm here to tell you he's got it. This is where a different kind of grace enters in. It's the grace that says, I know you are and I'm going to bless you anyway. From all of us at Sea Life Ministries, 